These are the times when changing social system is also bringing about a change in the status of its members. Changes in a particular field have an impact in other realms of the society too. An emergent phenomenon is the growing flexibility and changes in the gender roles of men and women. Early societies had rigid roles for men and women with labels as masculine and feminine. Man was considered as the provider of basic necessities for family and the woman was the child bearer and caretaker of home. Till recently, women were recorded the role of the inferior sex and prized possession of the man. Cut to the present, where you have the woman who is adorning many a hat. She is not only nurturing her family, managing a job and pursuing a hobby, she is completely at home at what she does. On the other hand, there are men who are beginning to see the woman as another entity too. Men are coming forward to support the women and recognize their contribution. Even through this change, though it may be pretty small at the moment, it is beginning of, for sure. My question is, are gender roles really changing? To find out the answer, stay with me as I am going to explore just that in this one hour. Welcome to Gender Discourse. I am Lottie Alaric. To carry this discussion forward, I have in the studio a distinguished panel of guests. I'm very happy to welcome Kamla Bhaseen, who's a feminist activist with a very effective voice of her own. So I welcome you to the show. Okay. Sitting next to her is a very young filmmaker who's Ajay Govind. So I'm very happy to have you with me today. And to my left, I have a young girl. She's Sonali Sharma. She's a theater actor and a career woman, and she's brilliant at what she does. So welcome to the show, Sonali. Well, to begin with, uh, Kamla ji, as I said, you know, uh, when we all started, I mean, the Indian society, if we really look back, we all know that uh, the society was segregated and everyone had each role to play. But as the years have gone past, though not much has changed, but that change has begun somewhere. How do you look at it? Now, I think you are looking at society from a very urban, yes, middle class and upper class upper point class. of view. Hmm. The working class women, which is the poor women, their roles hmm. have really not been that segregated. Poor women have always worked outside. That's true. My mother hmm. didn't work outside, but my maid's mother, her mother, her mother, they have always worked, worked outside. outside. That's right. So, in traditional societies amongst the poor, hmm. men and women worked outside. Even today, if you go to a rural area or a tribal area, hmm. you will find many men carrying children, which you will not find our husbands doing. When their wives go out to work in the field or to hmm. the market, men might even be cooking. So I think as modernity has been going up, hmm. we perhaps are becoming more gendered. Even in my childhood, shoes were shoes. You wore shoes to protect your feet. But today, ye ladies shoe hai, hmm. ye giant ka shoe hai. Hmm. In my childhood, there was no blue for the boys and pink for the girls. That has all come. Everything from watches to handkerchiefs to umbrellas hmm. to shoes, everything has become gendered. Hmm. So I think somewhere, the modern age and particularly the capitalist a age mm. is making us more gendered, pushing us more into these very strict watertight, watertight roles. Mm. And because of consumerism and marketing, everything is gendered. Mm. Perfumes and fair and lovely and mm. fair and handsome. Mm. So I think it's a myth. Mm that middle class is much more progressive. You can see the body language of our maid servants and compare it to our body language. Mm. True. They can go out to the market at any time of the day mm. because if you have to take care of your stomach, mm. then you can't be hiding. That's true. You, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice. Really. And uh, so I think we need to even clarify mm. our ideas on gender. Mm and see 
whether mm. it's true for all true for all that's true so govind i think since we are all in this urban setup and as she said you know consumerism drives a lot of our thought processes a lot of our actions and whatever we do and that in return also then uh, goes on to determine as to what we really want or not like she said the pink and the blue and what have yes, you yes. so what is your assessment of this whole um, thing? i i think that's that's an interesting thing to mm. um, to start off with because um, the fact of the matter is the world is becoming increasingly gendered mm. uh, and there are a lot of pressures in that sense to be and to follow those gender roles and those kind of stereotypes mm. Mm. but at the same time emotionally and psychologically we are also living in an age where people are trying to break those those mm. same stereotypes mm. those th That's same true. rules That's and they're true. trying to break out um but uh, unless there's an active and sort of conscious um effort mm. and and this goes from you know across the board i think for men women everyone uh, i, unless they're consciously kind of trying to break out um, to change this mm. i don't think it will change <coughs> as much and i think we mm. will get kind of cowed down and get stuck in the roles that that maybe a capitalist or a consumerist society is mm. trying to push us into mm. uh, so that's that's really what i would feel and i and i do uh, think as as a filmmaker when i watch movies when i you know just yes. i was sitting outside and i was watching an ad in which uh, uh, there was someone talking about how love is is not um, expressed in india it's shown and a woman is you know mm. serving food to her husband right. and i'm thinking you know that's that's the problem right mm. that that becomes <coughs> an expression of love in in our in our mm. and and we ex we accept these images we mm -hmm. accept these images as as audiences we don't even think twice before we we say yeah that's true mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's i think where change mm -hmm. needs to happen that's true yeah. that's true well sonali as an actor i'm sure we are all a part of the advertising world or mm -hmm. the cinema or what have you so uh, in indian cinema if we talk about how the woman has been portrayed over the years what is your assessment of it all well i think uh, you know like ms basin said also mm -hmm. that uh, depiction there's been art cinema and there's mm -hmm. been commercial cinema right in art cinema all along they have shown women as a strong individual mm. you know who comes mm. out of a situation and you know makes it work it's real right in commercial cinema to some extent they say that the woman has been commercialized mm. okay they more or more like a product mm. to be shown okay what is happening now i think today the line between art cinema and commercial is also thinning mm -hmm. you know and also True. um you know the women the actors today you mm. know on commercial and well as art you know they both are they strong women mm. who now don't go for the typical stereotype i would say they want to do everything mm. and uh, they are I, if you have to really use the word homemakers i wouldn't use that as uh, you know as in people women who are sitting at home mm. but uh, you know women who are managing home managing the careers managing you know living a normal life mm. the thing is you know when uh, especially in the corporate world i would say when a man is the head of an organization mm -hmm. uh, he, and he's leading he's a leader okay he's the boss mm -hmm. but when a woman is leading an organization she's also a leader but some people tend to tag the boss as bossy mm -hmm. you know there is that perception i think that whole changing of equations between men and women mm -hmm. uh, people are uh, finding it some people are finding it difficult to deal with this shift of equations and this is happening right. largely in urban india i would say right, right. because like she said in rural india women have been working since forever that's true you know that's true. but this whole game changing of women being uh, strong and mm. today taking care of themselves they are finding their voice especially mm. i would say in the middle class in the lower and the upper middle class where the change is happening where they are fighting within their homes mm. to make their voice heard mm. i mean today also the masses which are speaking are not just people who are just poor people they are mm. people who are regular you know normal you know uh, middle class people who are also willing to come and join hands the no, no. i feel come it on the line that uh, whole uh, you know that line is thinning hmm. which i think is great for hmm. today it's hmm. a great time to be in actually hmm. right so kamla ji i think she, uh, you are very right when you said that uh, women you know in the lower strata if we say that they've always been working forever yeah. but when we talk of the middle classes so the woman has got you know her own entity only when she has become financially independent mm -hmm. so do you think as she said this is the time when we are seeing more women coming out and becoming financially independent and how do you look at the future of these kind mm -hmm. of women no i mean that is true for mm -hmm. us yes like i was in my family amongst the first women to come out and work mm. my mother was a housewife mm. i think we women have changed our gender roles mm. much more rapidly than our brothers and husbands and fathers have done that's right so we have stepped out to take on so called men's roles mm. 
by earning. Have they taken on our roles in the kitchen, our roles of mothering our children, our roles of looking after the old? They haven't. And it is this gap which makes us carry double or triple burden. Mm. And I think the time has come that if we take on men's jobs, men need to get into the kitchens. Mm. Men need to start changing nappies. nappies men need to be there to do the homework. Mm. And I think it's because men have not been able to do this mm. that the rate of divorce mm. is going higher and higher. In the West now it's 50% marriages ending into divorce. Mm. If our men don't change fast enough, Correct. it'll happen because we women mm. today are not looking mm. for masters, pati, mm. swami, right. husband, yajman. In, mm. I heard yesterday in Kannada, it is yajmana. Okay. All terms for masters. Mm. We are not looking for masters anymore. True. True. We are looking for partners. for partners. And if we are partnering in this job of getting money, mm. they have to partner. And not only for the sake of equality, mm. but for the sake of the pleasure you get from serving someone. Mm. From the pleasure and deepest satisfaction. That's true. Yeah of bringing up children. Hmm. For their own sake, men need to change to enjoy life in a multi-dimensional way. They hmm. are so unidimensional. <laughs> They're so boring. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> right. I think this is the answer I'll try and get from Ajay here. Yes. Since he's the only, <laughs> he's really the only male funny. member on the panel. I agree. It really isn't funny. Because I, you know, I, think, I, think, the, I think the crux of this is, hmm. like we said earlier in the previous question also, the idea is the r roles getting gendered in itself is absurd. Hmm. You know, yeah, the, true. I, the roles and spaces within a house getting gendered hmm. itself is absurd. Hmm. Um, and until, you know, men and, and women, hmm. I, I, you know, if men and women realize that, uh, I don't think anything's going to change. And, hmm. and I'm saying men and women because there are enough women who would have problems with their husbands cooking. Yeah. You hmm. know, there are enough women who would yeah. have problems uh, with Absolutely. other uh, hmm. husbands cooking, hmm. you know. Uh, so, so there are th that kind of gendering is so ingrained in us, and that mm. needs to change. Mm. So these spaces, these roles, these these things that need to be done around the house and the world, those j need to be sort of not gendered anymore. And mm. that's that's I think when the change will happen. Mm. Right. Yeah. But I think if we go by the advertising world, because yeah, I s I feel that these advertisements are actually the pulse of society. Mm. You know how we function, mm. how we think, what is our thought process. So earlier in the day, we did have women who were only shown in the kitchen and just washing and, you know, doing up their daily chores. But now, uh, since a few years, we do find a little bit of a difference where we do find a man also in the kitchen. Mm. So does it mean again that the mindsets at least have begun to change over there? Well, I think, you know, it's, a sl uh, it's really slow, the process, because, yes. uh, you know, it started really slowly, but it's happening, which is a good thing. Mm. And, uh, you know, like they said, you know, it's stereotyping. Mm. What has happened is... Sometimes, I mean, you can't even blame either of the genders because it's so ingrained since mm. the time they were kids ki ye aise hona chahiye, aapko aise karna chahiye, mm. that is default. Mm. They don't do it with intention ki, okay, now I am the master. Mm. They believe they are. You know, yes. they, 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 are, they are told, don't cry, you're not a man. Yes, you're you not know? Yeah, correct. Why not? Hmm. Why is it wrong for a man to show, you know, that he can cry? Hmm. I mean, health-wise also medically, I think it's a good way to let out. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, seriously. So that whole thing of men being stereotyped, they have pressures also, hmm. you know, that, and now with so much of, you know, uh, power of, you know, uh, you know, of women being talked about, that women need to find their place. I feel also somewhere down the line, you know, I mean, some people that I've spoken to, some of the men feel pressured that, you know, I have to think twice before I say anything, even in jest, because <laughs> yeah. it might be an issue, yes. you know, because, mm. but the fact is the society is becoming very, very aware. Mm. And advertising, yes, it is a medium. Mm. But, you know, at the end of the day, the whole, the whole thinking that, you know, a woman's place is in the kitchen, after a certain age she needs to get married, mm. all of that is changing. You know, mm. after a certain age, women are getting married much later. Much later. And why yes. do you have to get married? at the Absolutely. end of the day. Hmm. It is a choice whether hmm. you're a man or a woman, hmm. whether you want to get married or you don't want to get married. It's something you do for the love of it, hmm. not because you have you to have do to. it. That's you right. know? So I think That's that right. is something which is also changing. So breaking stereotypes 
is going to take a while because mm. it's been there for centuries. But I think we're on the right track. We're on the know? right track. We're absolutely on the right track. So that's what this young girl thinks here. And I'm sure many of you out there too. Well, folks, it's time for us to slip into a very short break. But do come back quickly as then you too can participate and be a part of the show. All you'll have to do is call us on one eight double zero double one five three one four or two three zero three five four two zero. So don't go away as we are coming back in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Gender Discourse and today we are talking about the changing gender roles. Well, folks, as I said, you too can be a part of this show. All you'll have to do is pick up your phone and reach us at one eight double zero double one five three one four and two three zero three five four two zero. That is one eight double zero double one five three one four and two three zero three five four two zero. Prefix zero double one to this number. Now, Kamla ji, uh, Sunari just touched a little bit about you know the gender stereotypes. I think we as uh, women are also bringing up our children separately. in a very separate manner like as she said people will always tell a boy not to cry you're a man you're a boy you can't cry and for a girl that she always has to play with dolls and with you know colors and those kind of things and the boy has to play with all those gizmos that we have mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. are we doing this maybe not really consciously but the results of this when we see later those are something that we don't really yeah. like but i just want to look at the word gender first okay many people Mm. are using this word gender mm. but most people still do not know the meaning of gender gender does not mean a man or a woman gender means the way society defines a girl and a boy, and a boy. and a woman and a man we are defined in two ways one by nature how has nature defined a man and a woman minor differences mm. in our genitals and our breasts so as far as mother nature is concerned she made us different mm. only for reproductive reasons only mm. we have been given the extra responsibility of carrying the child mm. and breastfeeding everything else a girl will not go out a girl will come at mm. this time a girl will cook mother nature hasn't said this mm -hmm. all this is gender this dupatta mm -hmm. is gender in kerala if i go to his part of the world women will not cover their breasts normally they would have a skirt and a blouse mm -hmm. so gender is everything what society says and all the inequalities which have come haven't come because of nature mm -hmm. they have come because of society and gender mm. so that is gender and the problem is not gender the problem is patriarchy patriarchy yes it is because we have this male dominated social system mm. they want the boys to be strong and women not to be strong mm. what is masculinity masculinity is the way society defines a boy femininity is the way society defines, defines a woman girl. correct so masculinity is that you are a boy you will not cry mm. you will not show your fear you will not show your emotion mm. you will be strong now how many men are muscular how many men are not emotional mm. you have to push them into those roles mm. and in that you break them so you are pushing women into roles and breaking women and you are pushing men into roles and breaking them and nobody remains whole and i'm going to say something very strange today which most people are not talking about i believe that patriarchy in a deep spiritual way is harming the man much more than women mm -hmm. look at a rapist hmm. 
Look at a rapist who, because of religion, rapes a woman of the other religion. Hmm. He hates that woman and yet he uses his own body. He uses his own genital to enter her, to rape her. Will he use that same genital at night with his wife, with his girlfriend? Will he use that same genital to produce children? What is his relationship with his progeny, with his children? Today leaving a child in a sex worker's womb, tomorrow in the raped woman's womb, third day on somebody else's womb. <clears throat> no relationship with emotions, none with their body, none with their progeny. Now this is dehumanization of a very deep nature. A man who can beat his wife and 40% Indian husbands according to the government of India hmm. are violent towards their wives. Hmm. What humanity fellows? I mean I would like my none of my daughters to be married to such men. Hmm. So I think men need to realize how dehumanized and brutalized they are getting. And look at all the advertisements. Mm -hmm. wali baat. That's right. This is the boy thing. This mm -hmm. is the man thing. Mm -hmm. Whether man, it, is it is the man thing, man, but it is not the human thing. Mm -hmm. So let's do things which are human things mm -hmm. so rather absolutely. than these brutalized men things. We've had enough of We've it. We've had enough of it. Absolutely. Well, we have a viewer at this point. This is Kritika from Pune. So, Kritika, if you can hear me, welcome to the show. Hello. Uh, yeah, this is Kritika Pandey from calling from Pune. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, again, again, I congratulate uh, for, you know, initiating a discussion on such a good topic. And it's really good, whatever uh, whatever discussion I've seen since around. I would just like to point one thing, like, you know, it's, it's the men, uh, women have started to find a position in the society. Hmm. Before also they were doing a lot of work, but the only fact was, you know, they were doing cooking, but that was never considered something which could earn you something. Hmm. Now that they've started earning and all, so people have just uh, started to realize, okay, so this worth something. So that's what I want to point out, and uh, I guess women are doing great today. Hmm. That's all I want to say. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ritika, for calling us and being a part of this show. Well, so since the time that women have started earning, that is how they have started gaining their respect. That's what she feels. But I want to ask you here, she just touched upon advertisements. But India, we are largely, you know, driven by Indian cinema, Bollywood, yes. or Indian cinema, yes. or what have you. And wherever okay. the woman or the man have been portrayed, we all know, I think we've had enough discussions on that, that the hero is always shown like this over-empowering man who can get things done at the, you know, Click of his uh, click of his fingers and what have you, and the girl has always to just toe his line. So, and that is what people grow up believing that this is how they have to be when they grow up when they have families. So, do you think a little bit of responsibility also lies somewhere there that let us start portraying something that is real? I, I think a lot Why should of we only leave it at the art cinema? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of responsibility. I don't think the art cinema wants that responsibility either. I think mm. art cinema is a thinking cinema, so it's it's natural mm. for it to think in that in that mm. sort of way. Mm. I, I think what she said is very right is that the the effect or the harm that patriarchy causes mm. is just as much for men as for women as because for women. right um, and and as far as portrayal is concerned I, I I have huge problems with the portrayal of men in cinema mm. Absolutely. you know forget Correct. getting meaningful roles yeah. for women what about meaningful what about roles for men, men? Yes. Yeah. you know I don't want I don't relate to the men that I see on, mm. on, on the no. big screen mm. so uh, how about portraying them a re mm. little realistically showing the showing them you know the, the emotions they feel and the journeys that mm. they have uh, so, as far as portrayal is concerned, I think it's it's a problem on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, I don't person I personally don't think there's much of a of a change. Mm. Uh, I think um, there are filmmakers who watch debates like this and read a little bit online and think that we should give the woman a job in the film, mm. uh, you know, so that then then she has something to do. <laughs> something and to then do. Sh so she's she's given a, a sp but that that's that's as far as it goes. Mm. As far as um, breaking the stereotypes, as far mm. as letting the woman make difficult decisions. Um, just as much as a man needs to make difficult decisions mm. is concerned, that doesn't happen. Mm. Uh, so I, I think that's that's mm. where the where that is what is. needs really needs to be questioned. Yeah. But before that, uh, we have another viewer. This is Mala. She's also from Pune. So Mala, if you can hear me, welcome to the show, and please go ahead with your question. So Mala, welcome to the show, 
Hello? Please lower the volume of your TV set. Hello? Hello? Yes, please go ahead now. Well, I think that uh, phone has really gone off. So, uh, till she tries again, let's just go into another break. But when we come back, we'll also have with us uh, Professor Anand Kumar, who's a sociologist at the JNU. So, don't go away as we are coming back in just a moment. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Gender Discourse, and today we are asking whether gender roles are really changing. Well, right now we have with us Dr. Anand Kumar, who's a sociologist at the JNU and is also a noted activist today. So, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Well, before we continue, we have another viewer. This is Abhishek from Bihar. So, Abhishek, can you hear me, please? Yes, I can ask my question in Hindi. Yes, yes, absolutely. Ask. I am Abhishek from Rachi. My question is that instead of this thing, we have equality in gender roles. We always say that men and women have equality in men and women. One thing is that if a girl or a man is working in a house, if you have a job at home, you can see it as a job. Or if we pay our maids, 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 and if there is a particular lady, if she is working, then she needs another woman for her emancipation. If she is a maid, then it is necessary to have this. If a woman has been given this gender, then a man has to have an equivalent. So, there are rules here, उनकी हायरर की उनकी हायरर की जो है उसे मिटाने की जरूरत है और ये जरूरत है कि ये कोशिश नहीं की जाए कि आदमी और औरत बराबर है ये कोशिश की जाए कि सारे काम बराबर हैं क्योंकि एक आदमी भी जो रूटीन जॉब करता है that's right. Absolutely. Abhishek, I think you've made a very pertinent point over there. So thank you so much for joining us. So very quickly, I would ask Dr. Anand to comment on this. Well, the idea of an egalitarian society. Was one of the guiding stars for nation building during the freedom struggle and in the early phase of democratic transformations. Mm. Somehow, in the last two, three decades, we thought that we can suspend the commitment about egalitarianism because it smells of a rotten rat called socialism, mm -hmm. which has failed in Soviet Union and in China, where in spite of economic egalitarian systems, the gender issues were never addressed mm. in a frontal manner. Mm -hmm. And there was need of another cultural revolution mm. to meet the challenge of inadequate transformation under the socialist umbrella. But the idea of equality looks like the need to go beyond the competitive mm. opportunities which have come our way in the last 60 years in the field of education, employment, uh, legal entitlements, mm. unless we go back to the basic need mm. of considering each other same, meaning egalitarian perspective, then we will have a better chance mm. for gender justice. Mm. Otherwise, there will be some kind of built-in hierarchy, pendulum-like swing mm. against or for gender roles. And there will be some kind of a hierarchy of significance, mm. of opportunities, uh, occasions, uh, institutions. I'm very happy that this friend pointed out mm. our society has become tolerant of inequalities and the inequalities have grown, accelerated Absolutely. in the name of competitive opportunities. Mm. And that has hurt mm. the erstwhile disadvantaged groups, be they Dalits, tribals, minorities, women. There could be new categories also, mm. like the older <coughs> people. So we must go back and revisit hmm. the path which was created by the freedom fighters. They had some purpose about it. They were not dogmatic. Hmm. They were pragmatic. And that pragmatism demanded egalitarian worldview. Hmm. 
so that we can be humane with each other despite our differences. Mm, that's right. And that's, that's just the little basic that if we really get to understand this basic, maybe bigger changes can really happen. So Kamla ji, do you want to build up on that a little bit? No, I mean what he's saying is absolutely correct and as I said earlier, yes. as far as mother nature is mm. concerned, she has made men and women different mm. only for reproductive purposes. purposes. Mm. Other than that, we can do everything and mm. what we need to understand that just as patriarchy puts women into boxes, the men are put into boxes. Now sure. a young man wants to be a poet. Mm. No, you have to take on family business. He's not interested in business. Mm. Why does he do it? Because in patriarchy he will inherit the property right. and the name of the family mm. and he will take it forward. If his sister was given the opportunity to carry the name of the family mm. and the business, mm. then that young man could be a poet. That's right. And she is interested in business. So let her go. Mm. You know, I've never seen a farmer who may have 10 acres of land and says, my five acres should flourish and the other five can rot. But I've seen families which say, our sons should flourish mm. and our daughters, well, they can remain. That's right uneducated, mm. unexposed, mm. etc. Mm. So I think once we give more freedom to women, men will also finally get freedom mm. because without the women being free, men can't be free. That's I right. mean, if men have to protect, you know, women half the time, if they have to find dowries mm. for their sisters and daughters, and if they have to be breadwinners mm. all the time, so so marge bichare, khatam ho <laughs> so I think make women competent and strong and free so that men can be the same. Mm, that's right. Well, Ajay, we were talking about our Indian film industry and the portrayal of men and women and what have you. So when one really goes and questions the filmmakers and why is it that you portray men in a certain light and women in a certain light, they will just say, well, the masses understand just this. So can we really get away by saying that? I think that's a very old argument and mm. that's a very unimaginative argument. Right. Uh, which only speaks of the absence of imagination on the part of the filmmaker mm. and the writer, I would mm. say. Because uh, a film like Gangs of Asirpur, mm. um, you know, there's a very fam now very famous scene where the where he t holds <coughs> her hand and she says, "Permission to leni chahiye thi." Mm. You know, that little plug of consent um, has worked. People mm. people have enjoyed that little moment, and it's actually a plug of consent. It's saying the woman is saying to the man, "You should ask me before you hold my Correct. hand." Uh, as opposed to uh, the Amir Khans and the Shah Rukh Khans yes. of the world chasing the women, mm. uh, you know, almost harassing them mm. and, and calling it love. So, so as far as, uh, so I think it's purely just an absence of imagination. And, mm. and if the filmmakers were to sit down and consciously think, when I write a script, I was recently writing a script for a, uh, for a romantic film, and I got to a point where I had to call, call my script consultant and say, look, I'm stuck and I seem like I don't have but a regressive option. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. And I discussed it with her and we were able to come out because I didn't want to go that path. That's right. I didn't want, want to go that path at all. So I think as filmmakers, if we sit down and consciously think about these things, um, a film like Ishak Zade, mm -hmm. uh, for instance, which had a very strong uh, woman character who then falls in love and wants to marry her rapist uh, in the second half of the film, I, I met somebody from the team and they did, the, that thought didn't even sort of come to their mind that mm. this character who was a strong, fierce, independent woman post interval suddenly falls in love and wants to marry her uh, rapist because mm. the mother asks to asks mm. her to. So there are these, th and I think it's just an engagement. I think if, if you let, 10 years ago, I was laughing uh, at the stereotypes, uh, you know, I, I'm not anymore. Mm. You know, I'm not anymore. Mm. So I have evolved as, as someone who's, who's watching films, as uh, someone who's learning. Right. I'm sure there is a lot of scope for people mm. and just through discussions like this, you know, mm. uh, I think there is a lot of mm. hope, uh, sort of scope right. for change. Well, let's see what our next viewer has to say. This is Ashish with us. So, Ashish, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, well, ma'am, my question is for, uh, for uh, all the respected guests here. Mm. Uh, you uh, seem to mention that uh, rural women have been going out and working uh, out from the house. But what do you say about the total lack of control these rural women, mm. instead of being working, they don't have any control over their social life, their, the economic stand, 
decisions of her family even the decisions of her life like marriage and having children mm. and uh, they don't have any control over them they are True. totally neglected in decision making mm. absolutely so it is it is a paradox there as well thank you very much for making that point well a quick comment from you yeah i i remember reading a a, a joke yesterday mm. online uh, where a, a, a guy is telling another friend of his that my my dad's a women's rights activist hmm. and the other guy says oh really not your mom your dad he says yeah my dad wouldn't let my mom be a women's rights activist <laughs> so it, it's yes. it's really you know so and and when we talk about rural hmm. it, those are compulsions hmm. that's not a choice it's compulsions that's right those are compulsions that make women go out and work hmm. uh, so so i i think that's that's a slightly more complicated argument as just saying that you know or or to say that rural women have more opportunities hmm. just because hmm. so yeah hmm. so nani do you want to say anything to this um i want to say one thing that mm. you know uh, because of i mean things are changing now mm. and i have i work 9 to 5 i have a day job okay and from 6 to 9 i do theater mm. okay it's my life yes i'm living it the way i want to i have parents who do worry because you know of the way the city mm. is and it's unsafe but worry is one thing mm. you know uh, you know saying that okay you can't do this you can't go out after a point that becomes that's when this whole uh, equation changes mm. i'm told we are worried as long as you can take care of yourself it's fine that is i feel you know if when i say moving ahead at the end of the day i'm i'm a earning member mm. okay i'm uh, doing what i want to do after working hours there is no stop to there's nobody there to judge me i am not going to be thinking about what people or the world will be thinking about mm. it mm. you know and for me as which is why i say it's a great time to be in mm. but it's a changing time which is why like you know like i also said that uh, what's happening is earlier you could laugh about it now nobody wants to laugh about mm -hmm. it it's not funny anymore mm -hmm. because people are using their brains they are thinking you can't sit back and just say chalta hai bhai mm -hmm. sab kuch chalta hai ab nahi chalta hai mm -hmm. ab awaaz uthani hai to uthayenge mm -hmm. you know because that is the way things are today mm -hmm. that's so, right so dr anand do you also see this as the beginning of that change which should have actually happened yesterday i mean i feel perplexed because this was happening during the last phase of the freedom struggle mm -hmm. where women were coming out and there were leading struggles mm. right from the national movement uh, sal satyagraha sarojini naidu to present movements in uh, various parts of the country and somewhere they stopped in the tracks or they were stopped in the tracks mm. in 1960s and 70s today there is again a pressure from below feminization mm. of the political space has become an imperative for making our democracy healthier and that has been one of the uh, you know uh, initiatives which came from below to meet the crisis of governance so they said okay we mm. have 30% women in grassroots democracy or grassroots government they said 30% is working all right but what can we have some better mm. something more now it is 50% women are there to manage water fodder fuel children health education social peace mm. now if that is happening at grassroots india it has to happen at the level of jila mm. and pradesh and kendra it is being stopped but it is a losing battle hmm. unless you allow a uh, meeting of the gender deficit in our system of governance that's our bottom line we are a hmm. democracy hmm. from where everything else is getting organized whether it is our social customs or our economic initiatives now but in society there is some kind of a silent sacrificing by women for seeking their spaces hmm. all these killings which are happening hmm. are happening for women and men who are getting married across caste frontiers hmm. this is a silent sacrifice hmm. for emancipation for creating a society of love and compassion hmm. they are not hurting anybody hmm. they are loving each other they want to be with each other hmm. to create a better True. family True. better world for tomorrow True. and they are being killed hmm. by forces of orthodoxy and that's where our silence silence hmm. our silence meaning silence of the elite hmm. be it economic be it political be it cultural is very hurtful hmm. and i think these are the zones hmm. where things are melting down hmm. there is a great fluidity there is a great flux but unless we give political space hmm. these things will remain always uh, uh, some kind of a zone of tragedy hmm. rather than celebrating hmm. our freedom our democracy our rule of law this hmm. is all rule of jungle hmm. and i think this mismatch between the political space being feminized and social space remaining outside the 
hmm. command or you can say outside the partnership of men and women this tension is a very big tension hmm. and this requires creative hmm. solutions absolutely absolutely i think you really put it in perspective well we just have time to take this caller this is vartika from jamshedpur so vartika if you're there with me welcome to the show sure yes vartika please go ahead yes i would like to say that uh, from ancient times women are being worshiped as goddess shakti we call them and worship them as uh, means uh, i would like to say that in india women are being worshiped but on the other hand if we see uh, women are being raped on the other hand correct so i would like to say that now it's high time when women want to be uh, an a part of the whole citizen of india as a as men exercise the power we women uh, want to be a part of this whole indian politics uh what whether it be um, social or um, political or uh, that's anything. right so women want to be a part of this social change which is right yes. now happening ha, in the country that is right yes. thank you so much i do get your point of view so thank you so much uh, we do have to slip into another break but before that i'd like to say thank you to kamla ji for taking time out and for being a part of this discussion thanks for joining us well folks you all don't go anywhere as we are coming back right after this break <laughs> Welcome back this is gender discourse and today we are asking whether gender roles are really changing Well folks you still can be a part of this discussion all you'll have to do is pick up your phone and reach us at 18005314 or 2303524200 prefixing 011 to this number Well before we went into the break we had this young girl from Jamshedpur saying that in India women earlier were being worshiped and look at what is happening to them now But my question is that why is it that woman either she needs she has to be worshiped or she has to be just you know beaten up to pulp Why can't women just be considered as equals, as he mentioned a little while ago? What is the problem, really? Where does it lie? Till today, I think if the women were asked, they wouldn't want either. I'm I sure. absolutely, absolutely. I think it's as simple as that. I don't so, think women's consent is involved in this in this mm. process of choosing what to do with them. Mm. Uh, let the woman decide, and I'm sure she'll be able to, you know, make a decision for mm. herself. In whether, and that goes across strata of societies mm. and and across careers and across everything. So. Mm. Uh, I, I think that it's as simple as that. Mm. I, I don't think the woman chooses to be worshipped. I don't think the woman wants to be worshipped, mm. and she definitely do, doesn't want to be brutalized. Mm. Um, it's the men who decide, uh, right. you know, that to conveniently sort of decide what they want to do with the woman at, at what point of time, mm. uh, and how they want to hide their kind of doings mm. by saying, "But we also worship women, and we also, Correct. you know, in Correct. our culture Correct. and Correct. this and that." Correct. Yeah. I think is this is, is it not the worst form of patriarchy here, Sonali? That either we want to put the woman on such a pedestal where we just bow our bow our heads uh, the, before her, or we do what we are really doing. So, which means that somewhere down the line, as he said, women will never want things like these for themselves. So, mm. which means patriarchy is at play. Patriarchy is very much at play. I mm. think at the end of the day. Uh, I think men and women all they want to be treated as, as equal human beings mm. you know gender is just something like you know this vaccine etc it just comes into it mm. you know i work for this organization called help it india mm. and we get uh, callers uh, you know in our helpline where older people are abused mm. okay and one of the main problems of abuse is property mm. invariably unfortunately with statistics maximum of the abuse happens by the sons because of property mm. and the person who ends up looking after the parents is the daughter mm. okay and it's not something she does because she has to do it because she is just something that she wants to do mm. and she is working she is living with her parents or not living with their parents but at the end of the day it's and a lot of times we find you know surprised callers who are surprised ki they thought they would bang their entire lives on their sons mm. thinking that's where you know at this point in my life ye zindagi ke is padav mein hum aaram se jiyenge beta hai khayal rakhega but and lot of them were pleasantly surprised that beta nahi hai but beti hai kar rahi hai and uh, it is not common across all uh, i mean across the board i would say there are exceptions to the cause but the fact of the matter is there is so much a pressure on each gender to do a certain role hmm. at the time that That's uh, right. and i don't think even the men are asked Hmm. you know uh, men are asked you know i mean women are treated as goddesses they are men goddesses i mean at the hmm. end of the day men have been mentally conditioned that you are supposed to be the masters hmm. so if they if women call you god 
that you're right hmm. you know so you i think yeah sure, it enough. i think the it's needs to, it's just education which needs hmm. to be started at the basic level True. you know that ev- what you a child sees on a day to day level on how you treat your parents when you grow up and have kids they'll treat you the same way hmm. you know so it's is that that one needs to change this this whole stereotyping constantly hmm. which happens in your day to day living hmm. true so. now uh, dr anand we are all the time talking of women equality and what have you do you think that men somewhere down deep down they may just be plain threatened because it's not that the woman will not be able to do it to do anything today the point is that she may just be better than you so do you think there is that little uh, you know thin line of threat somewhere which they see and never really want to voice out you know generally sociologists uh, borrow from psychologists hmm. certain observations and studies and inferences about this problem of hmm. brutality of men towards women and there is some kind of uh, a, a, a hidden insecurity mm. about competition about getting uh, getting uh, somebody who is superior mm. uh, and you don't see in in larger life uh, such kind of couples where women are better than men mm. because then these men are stigmatized joru ka gulam yes. or you know uh, somebody who is yes. no good mm. but if a woman is there as a silent Uh, partner and maybe source of strength and resilience mm. as was kasturba with gandhi or many others mm. uh, we have this uh, proverb that you know behind every successful man mm. there is a woman these are all stereotypes where we try to generalize out of certain principles of morality all of us look for three things in our life men or women mm. first of all we want dignity mm. this dignity is something which is undefined which is very instinctual and you, you know where it is and where it is not mm. then the second thing we all want is difference mm. we want respect for what we are mm. apart from dignity and then ultimately this dignity and difference has to culminate into happiness mm. now the men have to recognize by looking into the eyes of the women in their life is their happiness mm. oozing out of their eyes or not if there are silent sufferers you are becoming an incomplete person mm, correct the unhappiness of your partner mm. overlaps <clears throat> your happiness and you become that much unhappy knowingly or unknowingly mm. so men are not always insecure mm. sometimes actually they are pampered mm. by their mother by their wife their by their sister right. by their partner by their daughters Even most of all mostly, i mean yes. <laughs> so there is this freudian connection uh, between men and women right. across the relations of uh, uh, relations of biology but at the same time sociologically culturally there is a scale there are cultures where men are very insecure hmm. there are cultures where men are very uh, normal so to say right. and this is also related with religious orders hmm. there are liberal religious traditions there are conservative liberal tra- mm. uh, religious traditions so within the same religion mm. you'll find different kinds of molds mm. out of men and women are created absolutely if you have liberality if you have openness you have some kind of inbuilt conf- confidence about your being mm. that i i belong to something special i am somebody special man or woman then that rela- that person will ooze out confidence mm. but if you are living in a very hierarchical very stigmatized very dogmatic insecure community and religious order mm. mostly minorities mm. men of minorities anywhere hindu muslim sikh isai aapas mein sab bhai bhai if they are in a minority syndrome it gets reflected in their dealing with women mm. and if they are in a confidence atmosphere then it will really have a better situation mm. well we can just hope for that well right now there's another viewer this is vaishali from bangalore so vaishali are you there with me uh yes hello yeah please go ahead vaishali uh hello ma'am i would like to raise this issue about uh, elderly or uh, women in particular hmm. in indian women uh, who uh, become widows in their even in their early 20s or even 30s 40s hmm. it is very difficult for them to remarry uh Uh, comparatively to the male hmm. males uh, can be marry hmm. very easily but not women right 
Widow well, widow remarriage, absolutely. I think that's uh, that could be a source of another discussion someday. But yes, I think the point that she's making is this, that there is again that gender stereotype here. It's very easy for a man to remarry, but quite difficult for the woman. Right. So anything quickly you want to comment um, on? You know, the recent Tanishq ad which made, made, yes, made waves yes, uh, yes, yes, was yes. an excellent example, excellent of, example of how an advertiser was trying to change mm -hmm. the image of, you mm -hmm. know. And mm -hmm. I take a lot of... Uh, it made me really happy to see how much buzz of a buzz it created. Yes, it created. That right. and the Kangana Ranaut interview that happened last year mm. again created mm. a great buzz. So that, that mm. shows that there are people who are, I mean, I cringe when I see problematic mm. stereotypes. Yes. And that's just a natural, and, I'm, and, cr and I cringe in anticipation sometimes mm. uh, mm. when I'm watching a film or an advertisement or reading something. Mm. That, when it becomes natural across the board, that mm. it becomes, when it becomes natural for everybody, mm. that's I think where mm. change will that's right. Yeah. Well, since now we, we have very short time left today, Sonali, so at the end, what would you like to say? How do you look at the future of this urban Indian woman specifically? I think there's, uh, there's a lot to hope for. Mm. I think change is happening as we speak. You know, it's slow, but hopefully it'll be steady mm -hmm. and it'll hopefully pick up pace soon. So absolutely. I'm hopeful for the future. Absolutely, absolutely. Dr. Anand, what would you like to say here? Then? Well, it, it looks like a better time because we are mm -hmm. coming out of zone of silence. Yes. We are speaking out and sharing agony. Mm -hmm. And it's so comforting that there are many more people mm -hmm. with whom you can have the same wavelength. And that way is a better time. Of course, is not beyond conflict is not without tension, hmm. but it's a better time to resist and find and create your own space. Hmm, that's right. So what are going to be your Absolutely. final Absolutely. I think that's, that's what I'm, I would hmm. also say. I think the more people talk, the more people engage, the more hmm. people think about these things, hmm. the change, I mean, change is bound to happen. And I, and I do think there is a lot of hope because these changes are happening hmm. uh, it, precisely because there are conversations and engagements like hmm. this uh, happening. Well, so on that note, I'd like to say thank, thank you. you to all three of you for coming today Thanks. and for putting all thank this you. in perspective. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, friends, the changes and flexibility in gender roles which are being evident today has its roots in the changing social structure. Economic factors, advancement in sciences and changed value system have contributed to this change. I can assure you that given a chance, women can really prove themselves in every field. So instead of considering them as inferior or in some cases a threat is really not going to serve the purpose anymore. Why can't women be considered equal for all purposes? Believe me, this world would be a much better place to live in. We have examples galore of women excelling like excellence itself. So this new year, give women a chance. And I promise you, you won't regret it. On that note, it's a wrap of today's discussion. Do catch me next week for another engaging discourse. Till then, this is Lottie Alaric saying goodbye and take very good care of yourselves.